Hey guys, welcome back to Here's Rodder's Reviews. I am Rodney Stewart. I sat down the other night to an old classic, Convoy, from 1978. I haven't watched this film properly in about, gosh, maybe 10, 15 years at this point. It was an, a favourite of my father's whenever I was a child. And uh, I love this movie too. My dad was a long distance truck driver here in Northern Ireland and uh, you know this movie was just in our wheelhouse all together like you know talking over CB radios I used to have one as a kid growing up as well beside my bed and it was the way to keep in contact like before phone like your own mobile phone was a thing like kids these days just have no idea what it was like back then but i'm starting to sound really flipping old in the way i'm speaking here but uh this is an absolute classic movie and uh you know a lot of the synopsis i have been reading synopsis or synopsis what is the plural to synopsis um doesn't matter i've been looking it up you know the, there's bits of this movie that uh you know movies are completely subjective you can take, one person can take one thing and somebody else can take another thing out of it. But, you know, I've been looking through a lot of stuff here. And one thing I was very surprised about was there's a character in this movie that is played by Casey Yates. plays a character, Violet, in this movie. And uh, when I was reading up on this movie, they say that this character, Violet, was the daughter of of uh, er Ernest Borgnine's character uh, Lyle Wallace in the movie but you know as I say a lot of people take stuff from a movie that our people won't uh, it is the internet after all you know and you know there is a few lines of dialogue in the movie between the two characters that do kind of suggest that but there's nothing concrete in the movie to suggest that but it's a really weird thing to start on before we get into it the basically Ernest Borgnine, his character is a corrupt, dirty sheriff, basically, and he's out after truck drivers, basically, and the star of the show, Chris Christopherson, Christopherson plays the rubber duck, and um, he is, like, you know, all the truckers in the road know of him, and uh, if you recognise that name, you probably know him best at this point from... The Blade movies. He was Whistler, the guy that was the old guy that was helping Blade in the movies. But uh, starred in this here along with Ali McGraw, uh, Burt Young is in this as well, along with Franklin AJ um, and Madge Sinclair. They're kind of the four main truckers in this. You have the Rubber Duck, CB Radios. You had like a nickname if you had one of those things, the rubber duck was one of them uh, what's his face, Burt Young plays Love Machine or he wants everybody to call him Love Machine but he, behind his truck he's got a trailer full of pigs so everybody keeps calling him Pig Pen throughout the movie, we've got Spider Mike as uh, you know he's part of the main truckers that is Partly, well, I don't want to say partly responsible. The, the sheriff goes after him at one point because of his skin color. Let's just say that there's there's a lot of racial stuff in here as well. And uh, Madge Sinclair again as an R dark character, and I I never know what way to approach race whenever it comes to online content people say that the most politically correct thing this is is to refer to somebody as colored but i work with a lot of uh foreign people at work foreign nationals in this country and you know i've actually brought up this subject to them personally i was like what do you prefer do you prefer black or do you prefer to be referred to as a colored person and the vast majority of these people have said to me you know we prefer black we don't have a problem with that but the internet being what it is you have all these pc nutters that are you know putting out uh 
their opinions and what you should and should not call people. But the vast majority of these people will give you crap for either referring to as black or coloured are usually white people. They've got no, uh, you know, they've got no right. <laughs> you know, that's not up to them. It's up to the the person themselves what they prefer. But uh, that is racially charged, this film. And uh, the comedy in it is first rate, but whenever it's handling the serious stuff as well, it does it fantastically. It blends the two together very, very nicely. There's a lot of comedy in here between the main truckers, even Lyle Wallace being like the, the, the bad guy essentially in the movie. He is, you know, there's a lot of comedy with him that is delivered fantastic. Like the, the, when I was a kid, growing up, the first place I knew Ernest Borgnine from was Dominic Santini from the TV show Airwolf. And, you know, clean cut family show. He was brilliant on that. And in this movie, playing like the villain character, absolutely fantastic. Um, he's a guy that can skip between both very, very well. And the range he has in this movie is fantastic. Basically, at the beginning of the movie, and it's weird that we're only getting to this point, six minutes into the episode, but uh, Robert Duck. Uh, meets Ali McGraw's character at the very beginning of the movie. He's driving in the truck on his own. He meets her, and there's like a little bit of road rage between the two of them. And then a little bit of flirting happens. The, the car and the truck side by side in the road, and they almost take out a police officer. So you know, he gets pulled over for that. She makes an escape. Then later on, in the movie, at a truck stop, after the rubber duck falls in with. Pig Pen and Spider Mike, uh, they get tricked by Dirty Lyle Wallace into speeding. He's on the CB radio, pretending to be an R trucker, telling them that they, the road ahead of them is safe and, you know, kind of incites them into speeding. So whenever they come around a corner doing 80, close to 80 miles per hour, he pulls them over and, uh, you know, Cites him for speeding and uh, takes seventy dollars each off him, uh, completely wiping out Spider Mike all the money he had and uh, lets him go. So at a truck stop down the road, Rubber Duck meets up with Ali McGraw's character Melissa once again. Her car has broken down. She's had to sell it for scrap, and she's she needs a lift. She ends up getting. I left with the rubber duck, but this is the point we meet this other character that I was talking about earlier on. That's like a love interest of the rubber ducks, and he kind of, you know, he's not on a full relationship with her, but they have, you know, they meet each other, and you know, he'll take her into the truck, and they'll sleep together or whatever, and uh, you know, there's not much to that part of the film as far as that character goes which is why when I read that this woman could be the daughter of Lyle Wallace you know what that would back up why the rubber duck and Lyle have such a you know they I don't want to say hate each other like by the end of the movie you see there is like a like a silent respect between the two of them but they are on one side of the law one's on one side of the law one side, one's on the other side of the law and uh, uh, Lyle Wallace is out to take out truckers and he's just the racial thing comes in when they're in this truck stop uh, Lyle Wallace turns up he's checking out license plates and uh, Spider Mike and Pig Pen get on the CB radio in the the truck stop and they're like, you know, pretending to be talking back and forth on two different C B radios and they're like making fun of him. But uh, a waitress make accidentally makes noises with plates tipping Lyle Wallace off to where they're actually at and he comes in after them. And at this point, he goes after Spider Mike. Now, Spider Mike, uh, 
he needs to get home. His wife is nine months pregnant. She's about to give birth. Has to get home. And Lyle Wallace, knowing that he hasn't got money, tries to bust him on a vagrancy charge. And uh, this leads to a fight between him and Spider Mike. Where Spider Mike, you know, it, Lyle Wallace trying to arrest him and Spider Mike throws a punch at him, knocks him down. And uh, Lyle pulls the gun, is about to shoot him. The rubber duck kicks it out of his hands. They're in trouble at this point. And they decide to try and make a run for it and they're gonna handcuff Dirty Lyle to a chair while they make their escape but two more police officers turn up while they're doing this and an even bigger fight breaks out between everybody and a lot of the other truckers get involved including uh, Black Widow uh, Madge and Claire uh, fantastic in this movie by the way and uh, yes, all hell breaks loose, and the truckers have to go on the run for the state line to get out of the jurisdiction of the police. They can't be touched. They get over the state line. So this starts a chase, basically across the better part of the country between Lyle Wallace and the truckers, led by the rubber duck, who starts to become a celebrity, a reluctant celebrity. Because the word has gotten out, all the truckers on the road from where they are trying to go from to where they are trying to get to are like they found out Rubber Duck has stood up against the police and uh, they all start to join them on the road. <coughs> so uh, a small convoy of trucks that originally started out as four, five, six maybe eventually grows from that to 50 to 70 to 100 to maybe a thousand trucks by the end of the movie and it gets to be a national news piece across America and the, the governor gets involved in it and you know there's a whole political kind of side story with truckers rights and whatnot and uh, when the rubber duck is asked to actually talk to the governor about this uh, they get a place to stay overnight, safe from the law, so they can talk truckers rights and whatnot. But while this is happening, Spider Mike has also left the convoy to go back to be with his wife because she has just given birth. And uh, when they're having their conference, they get word that Lyle Wallace has arrested Spider Mike and has him in truckers hell in uh, New Mexico. And it's just a ploy to get the rubber duck to come after Spider Mike so Lyle Wallace can get his hands on him. So the rubber duck leaves the convoy, puts Peggy Penn in charge and he's heading off to pretty much face down uh, Lyle Wallace and uh, when he gets there he pulls into the side of the road and he's kind of contemplating what's going to happen. Um, Eight other truck drivers, including Pig Pen, turn up, stand shoulder to shoulder with them, and they, they, they literally destroy the town that uh, Lyle Wallace has Spider Mike trapped them. And there's a whole racial thing in there as well with the treatment of Spider Mike by the police. And uh, eventually they get him released to save him, and uh, Rubber Duck and Lyle Wallace have a face-to-face -face encounter in the police station and uh, you know Lyle he's swearing revenge he's gonna get the rubber duck and uh, rubber duck says you know I'm finished I'm out of it he leaves along with the truckers the film finishes off with uh, a bridge on the border leading to the, the state line. They're going to be safe on the other side of this. And uh, the, the rest of the convoy gets separated from Rubber Duck. And uh, he gets to the bridge and sees that on the bridge the National Guard are there along with Lyle Wallace standing on top of a tank. And uh, 
rubber duck tells Melissa to get out of the truck. You know, gets her out, throws her baggage at her. She slams it over on him, all angry. And the rubber duck takes his final stand by rushing the bridge and his truck. And he's, his truck's got like a, a chemical tanker behind it. And the National Guard open fire on him at the end of the movie. And uh, the truck trailer explodes on the bridge. And the truck itself takes a nosedive into the river below. And at this point, you know, during this uh, hail of fire coming from the National Guard, like Lyle Wallace is in there, in the thick of it with a machine gun. And he's going to town trying to take a rubber duck out. But whenever the truck takes a dive into the water, you see on his face the almost a bit of heartbreak right there because you know it's his villain in this movie has been taken out basically and then you know there, that's what it, when it said there's like a silent respect between the two of these and like Lyle Wallace at, at this point it shows it's very 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 you know it's it's not totally obvious it's it's so smoothly done but you can see there there's that level of I've murdered him sort of a thing you know he's, he's kind of like instant regret and whatnot but uh, we cut from that to as I say everything that happens throughout this movie was like a national story and they actually there's this huge sports arena and pig pens truck sitting there with a flatbed trailer on it and there's a coffin for the rubber duck and the the governor's up there giving a speech about uh this is a true american hero and whatnot and i'm going to take their case to the american senate myself and speak on their behalf sort of thing for truckers rights and uh melissa is walking about heartbroken and devastated at the loss of the rubber duck and there's a a bus that's been part of the convoy throughout the whole movie and that's the whole bus is just full of this crazy church you know like uh like these crazy like happy christian people you know and like they're absolutely hilarious throughout the movie and their pastor comes out and uh takes her by the arm and leads her onto the bus and in the back seat she comes across the rubber duck in disguise he survived the river and he's like did you ever know a duck that couldn't swim and at the end of the movie the uh the convoy has been led out of the stadium by pig pen with the coffin on behind his truck the governor's gone crazy because they've made a run for it during his speech and whatnot and as the bus is passing the stage where all this is taking place uh lyle wallace of course is standing and uh he catches a glimpse of this face in the back window of the bus and it's a rubber duck looking at him and the duck was on the cb radio using the intercom on top of the bus this loudspeaker intercom system the bus is set up with and uh he's like 10 4 good buddy <laughs> and uh Lyle Wallace is just like at first stunned and shock and then he looks about everything that's going on around him and uh, just the irony of the whole situation had some um, the movie closes out the credits start to roll Lyle Wallace goes into hysterics laughing his head off and uh, the governor's like what the heck's going on with him sort of a deal the movie is actually fantastic and I have talked so much more about it in this video than I was actually planning to. Like I've totally destroyed it for you at this point. But uh, this is indeed a classic, classic movie. One I have seen countless times. One that I don't necessarily ever get tired watching. You know, there's a lot of movies you can watch them and uh, you, need to <coughs> you need to leave them for a while and come back to them. But, you know... Convoy is one of these ones that you get kind of just, you know, I, I could hit it at any point, personally. Really, really enjoyable. The, the chemistry between all the characters in this movie is 
so well done, considering the vast majority of the dialogue in this movie is across CB radios between different trucks. So, like, the majority of the talk that they're doing on it, like, nobody is actually together in the one shot. Like, one person's in one truck, one person's in the other truck. But, uh, so, so well done. Like, for a video that at this point I have been talking for over 20 minutes, and there's a lot of stuff in this movie that I haven't even touched on at the moment. <coughs> Some of the chases. There's a stunt in here where Lyle Wallace is accidentally forced off the road by the rubber duck. And uh, he leaves the road, goes through a sign, um, through the roof of a house before the car touches the ground again. Uh, there's another sequence where one of the police cars gets you know, crushed between the trailers of two trucks. And uh, there's a brilliant little chase sequence through like a dirt road and the mountains it's it's all practical effects and some characters on there are just beyond comical for a movie that I, I don't even really know how to categorize uh, Convoy because okay AMDB lists it as an action drama I would agree with drama more than action, but I would say there's like action drama comedy should be in there. Like the the stuff that they deal with in here is the vast majority of it is very very serious stuff. Again, the whole racial side of things, but uh, it's mixed in with some light and some pretty dark humor in places. And it's all blended in so, so, so well that there's there seems to be something in this movie for just about anybody that's watching it. Now, the concept of the film itself, you know, a convoy of truckers trying to get across America to the state line to get away from the police is a very, very simple one. And some would say a pretty boring one as well. But the movie itself is so well done, so well put together. It stands, for me, it definitely does stand the test of time. And uh, Ernest Borgnine for the for the person in the movie that you should not be written for, and you really kind of don't in this movie. You want the the rubber duck and the truckers to get away from it, but for a villain in a movie, he is as bad as he is, as nasty as he is. There's something likable about him as well. It's one of these weird situations where you just you kinda don't know what you want to feel about this man. And uh, er Ernest Borgnine did an absolute fantastic job in this movie. I would highly, highly recommend anybody to sit down, check this movie out and uh, give it a fair chance. Uh, if you're not into the country and western music and that sort of thing, that's probably gonna annoy you slightly this movie is uh, based upon a country and western song so the the vibe of the music in a lot of this movie is along those lines as well but uh absolutely absolutely fantastic little movie and i couldn't not recommend it higher i'm going to finish off this video now because if i keep talking any longer it's going to be quicker to watch the movie than it is to listen to or watch this review so guys stay safe i'll talk to you in the next one